the 12 rules to live by on testosterone. This is number 10, hair loss on testosterone. This is going to be a huge, ginormous video for so many people because when I talk to men that are considering taking testosterone, I could tell you that so many men will say to me, Doc, the hair loss is a deal killer. Well, of course it is. What's going on here? The pathophysiology of hair loss for people, including women, where does it come from? Let's talk about the genetics. There's something called the mother myth that indicates that there is a strong genetic association on the X chromosome in an autosomal recessive fashion, the genes for hair loss. So coming from the mother, the X comes from the mom, the Y comes from the dad. But however, it's so multifactorial, the genetics, because you could also see studies supporting that you could look at the father's line of genes and that there's hair loss there. It's obviously not running specifically through the Y chromosome, but other chromosomes and other genes. But I wanted to make sure I include this cool science for you guys as we start this discussion. Hair loss is a multifactorial situation for millions and millions of both men and women in the world. Let's talk about the most common factors. Age, as you get older, hair loss certainly gets worse. Everyone knows that. Let's go into the medical issues. Medically, what happens? If you have thyroid disease, dermatologic disease, that's why dermatologists are experts in the hair. Rheumatologic disease, rheumatologic autoimmune disease, and then, of course, anxiety and depression, the interplay here. Medications, know your medications. So many medications can cause hair loss. Environmental and stress. That's all about hair loss. Generally, let's talk about hair loss on testosterone. Male pattern balding, you're on testosterone, you're concerned for hair loss, what's going on? We have to go right to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone is going to convert via an enzyme, 5 alpha reductase into different degrees of DHT, dihydrotestosterone. The physiology or pathophysiology of DHT is found in the skin, obviously the hair follicles, part of the skin, in the prostate and the central nervous system. DHT itself is thought to weaken and to shrink the size of the hair follicle, leading to hair loss. It's classically seen in the sensitive areas of the scalp for male pattern balding, the sides, the front, and the apex. How do I limit hair loss on TRT? This is... Hey guys, quick pause here. If you're watching this video, odds are you're concerned about your testosterone levels. That's where the sponsor of this video comes in. Let'sgetchecked.com. Let's Get Checked makes professional health testing easy by letting you get tested without having to visit a healthcare provider. Choose your test online, like one of their testosterone panels, and it will be delivered to you in discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in a laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. See my link in the description for more details and discount code. How do I limit hair loss on TRT? This is one of the most important questions I see every day. Number one, we have to talk about, again, the TRT, the testosterone converting to DHT. It's all going to be about how do you deliver testosterone and what's the dose. You know what's amazing? Transdermal applications of testosterone. Creams and gels have been seen in studies to increase up to five-fold DHT conversion. This is going to be versus the other applications. So in my opinion, again, microdosing small esters of testosterone, sipinate and enanthate, and if you're outside America, you got Sustanon 250, 
That wins again versus transdermal creams and gels that I don't think even make men feel that great anyway, and they're inconsistent. Pellets, patch, there's a buccal testosterone methodology. There's a nasal, you could take nasal testosterone, believe it or not, and of course, oral testosterone undecanate pills, which is kind of complicated and you just don't see it really utilized that much because those micro doses are just king, king. Now, is it worth it to block DHT? What's going to go on? Most importantly, it's going to be when you modulate and block DHT, it's going to affect your central nervous system, can leading to fatigue, anxiety, depression, and most importantly, loss of libido. Doc, I lost my mojo. I'm on testosterone. That's why I'm on testosterone. Now I'm losing the effect. Gentlemen, please, comments. Please tell me exactly your experiences. You're on testosterone using different types of DHT blockers. Now I'm going to start to go into this now. Finasteride and dutasteride. Let's get the comments. Equally as important as my words here are your comments for men in the world to learn and to read and to make their own decisions here. Most men, thousands of men that I take care of and I've seen in the last almost 20 years do not use DHT blockers. Maybe five or 10% of patients that I've seen will do it on testosterone. That speaks loud right there. Let's talk about what are the two DHT blockers. Finasteride number one, known to block up to 70% of DHT conversion from testosterone to DHT. It's a 5-alpha reductase blocker. It's been cleared by the FDA for use as a hair loss agent. Now, compared to dutasteride, can block up to 90% of DHT converting from testosterone. It's a DHT 1 and 2 blocker. The FDA has not approved it for hair loss. It's used off-label, which is fine. It's used on-label dutasteride for severe BPH and urinary retention. I've seen this in the hospital with older men that have enlarged prostates. They get potentially uroseptic because they can't pee. This is where this is used. Now, in that classical modality, you're not considering the mood. You're not considering the poor sex. Of course, in the hospital, you're not. And it works before the hospital, after the hospital. Men have to live on this medicine, dutasteride. This is very, very important information here. This is why you just don't see this, men living on this. This is kind of end of life stuff where your elderly man has a severely enlarged prostate and it's going to be a significant health risk, life and death health risk for urinary retention and being uroseptic, getting sick because bacteria from the urine goes into the blood and that could be deadly. You have to understand that's where these medicines come from. But back to finasteride, which is the most common one that it's used, one milligram a day, it's called Propecia, but it's all generic now, finasteride. So many people use it. Without testosterone, it's called finasteride syndrome, potentially. Look at the videos on finasteride syndrome. You gentlemen need to make all your decisions yourself. That's the future of medicine today. The side effects of blocking DHT. Again, mood, sex, libido, erectile dysfunction, even on ejaculation, it's all mediating through the central nervous system. And of course, we even hear of men utilizing DHT blockers and developing gynecomastia. So, how can you use these drugs and what's going to go on here? It's dose dependent. It's going to be dose dependent. It's man per man. I do have men that can tolerate utilizing small doses of finasteride more commonly versus dutasteride, more common with finasteride. What's the dose? One milligram a day, or maybe one milligram every other day, or maybe one milligram two or three times a week. Again, some men can check DHT, but it's more, it's really more clinical, right? It's, it's you take it, you see the hair loss slow down over months, you're not gonna see it over a few days or weeks, and you, you feel, doc, I feel good. Is it important to measure DHT? You might not want to see the number, but I let guys measure DHT. This is a clinical, this is what, how I help men 
there's no cookie cutter here, right? There's no McDonald's French fry making, although I love McDonald's French fries. So let's move now to natural supplements that can block DHT. Remember, this is systemic. We're, on, we're gonna move to topical. This is systemic. And is it worth it? Again, if you use supplements to have effects systemically, they're gonna block DHT, salt palmetto, classically. It's just a weaker version of real DHT blockers, finasteride, more commonly in dutasteride. I like to go for real medicines and just modulate those medications. But you can use salt palmetto, you can use stinging nettle, pumpkin seed oil, lycopene, green tea, caffeine, fenugreek. Those are all the supplements that definitely in an evidence-based fashion lead to DHT modulation and blocking. Topical treatments to slow and prevent hair loss on TRT. This is gonna be so important because this is where the real money goes where guys really can do it. This can really work. You, here, even for me, I take the advice here myself. Don't be lazy. If you want to slow your hair loss, you have to take this advice and it's going to cost some money and it's going to take some work. Ketoconazole. It's an antifungal medication, can be used topically, classically. It reduces inflammation and it helps health of the scalp. Can increase the individual size and health of the hair follicle itself. It's not a DHT blocking mechanism. Next, topical DHT blockers, not systemically, finasteride, dutasteride. There are compounds and there are facilities that will make shampoos and make topical medications that they involve DHT blockers, finasteride and dutasteride. Classically and hypothetically, less systemic effects. So less effect on the mood, the sex, and the fatigue than systemic blockers. Again, this does work. It can be topically applied. What else do we have? Topical minoxidil. Mechanism of action of minoxidil, very interesting, vasodilator. It affects the growth phase of the hair follicle itself. It's not a DHT blocker. What else do we have in addition to these real medicines that are DHT blockers? These are supplements, salt palmetto locally, pumpkin seed, even in my research found, and I've seen by my research from the patients and the men that tell me all these things, that's where I learned most of my information from you guys, from my thousands of patients over the years, melatonin cream. Melatonin, very interesting, central nervous system derived hormone, everyone has it, take it for sleep, it can actually work. There are side effects. You take too much, you can get groggy in the morning like anything else, like a sleep medication, and certain people can get depressed on it, so you wanna be careful. But topical melatonin has mechanisms for health of hair. Now, where can you get these formulations? In the shampoos, the medications, and where can you get these constituents placed together? Hair restoration doctors, other doctors that are specializing, in these clinics all over the world. Here I am in South Florida, all over the place, and dermatology doctors. Last but not least, other non-medical techniques to maintain or slow down hair loss while you're on testosterone. Let's go right off into the top. Massage. Massaging with or without medications or the supplements that we just talked about increases the thickness and strengthens the hair. Supplements. Systemic supplements now. We talked about systemic mediation of DHT blockers, finasteride and dutasteride. What about supplements that are not mediating through DHT? We talked about some supplements that do. Biotin, iron. Now, if you're on testosterone, what do I talk about all the time? Antigen-induced erythrocytosis where you could have too much iron because you're getting iron overload because of the genetic interplay for the heredity for maintaining and taking in too much iron and building up too much red blood cells. I have a whole playlist on this. This is gonna be very important. So you don't wanna just take too much iron at the same time when you have too much buildup of red blood cells because you're on testosterone. This is where you guys, I love helping you guys with this to put it all together. 
What other supplements, though, can be healthy for the hair? Onion juice, zinc, selenium, green tea, amino acids like cysteine, L-lysine. Not to mention, there's a whole host of other supplements that are taken just in a healthy sense and a great diet, even exercise, increase wellness of the hair. Platelet-rich plasma injections. I have to bring this to you guys. This is amazing. With the growth factors, PRP, they do it for the shoulder or the joint. They even do it for the hair. It works. Absolutely amazing. I've seen it. You go to a great facility, obviously, they have to know how to do it because they're taking your blood, they're preparing your blood, and then they're going to inject it back into your body and your joint itself. Better be a good orthopedic surgeon, in my opinion. Or in the hair, it's going to be someone who really understands the safe ways to do it so you don't get an infection. and It's going to be potentially painful. So also, in the end, seeing a hair restoration doctor or a doctor that's a dermatologist with the hair and considering a hair transplant in the end and all the above. So thank you so much. I really hope this helps. I hope this was a very thorough review of everything relating to testosterone and hair loss. But again, the comments in these videos are so important. So open them all up. I want this video to be spread all over the world for men that are considering or on testosterone, even steroids, and hair loss is important to them, which I think it is for all of us. At a certain point, men just kind of give up or give out, which is not bad, and they say, you know, doc, it is what it is. I have hair loss before testosterone. I'm okay, I'm sexy enough, and I feel great about myself. So in the end of the day, you gotta love yourself for everything you're about and just keep kicking ass. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope this video helps everyone.